Hey guys, welcome to the 16th episode of our Java game development tutorial series. Uh, this is this is about the fourth time I've tried to record this episode. First time I recorded it, I got about halfway through, I had an interruption. Um, second time I recorded it, apparently I had forgotten to turn my microphone back on from the last time, from the when I was interrupted the first time. Uh, so I recorded the entire episode and found out there was no sound. The third time, which was just a moment ago, uh, I tried to record it, and my computer froze, and the screen recorder crashed. So, I hope I've gotten rid of all the code that I messed up, messed with while I was um, recording the episode. Uh, let's try this again. Today we're going to create a camera um, for our game. Now, it's important to realize that in a game, there really is no camera. All it really is is you simply shift all the graphics on your screen by a certain amount, uh, to make it look like there's a camera. When you think about it, if a camera is moving to the right in your game, everything else will look like it's moving to the left of the screen. So if you just move everything opposite the direction that the camera supposedly is moving, you will effectively uh, have a camera, or what looks like you have a camera. It's all just an illusion. But that's the way it works in games. Games are about illusions and all that. So uh, first thing we're going to do is we need to make these two variables public. You know, this game width and game height, not the capitalized and underscored game width and game height, but the other game width and game height. Uh, and we're going to add two new public variables. A public static float called cam x, and a public static float cam y. Those are the x and y positions of our virtual camera. Okay. Um, also, in the player class, your render method is going to have stuff in it. Mine doesn't because I erased it like I'm about to do. Uh, just go ahead and erase it. I erased it earlier when I was recording, but then my screen recorder crashed. I couldn't restore that because I forgot what was in it. Um, suffice it to say, you can get rid of it because we're just going to use the super classes uh, render method. Um, so we're going to add an image. I've created a player.png image here. It's just the letter P inside a blue square. It's about 24 pixels wide and 32 pixels tall. That's just a placeholder because I'm not a graphic artist in any way. This is just to let you see where the player is. So in our player constructor, we're going to have to add that graphic real quick. Um, so we just say image equals renderer dot load image slash resources slash images slash player dot png and this will be different for you depending on where your package is and what you named your file and all that and just got to surround this with try catch because it is uh it could throw an error um so now if we were to run this yep we've got that but notice we fall through the ground that's because our uh, graphic uh, is a different resolution from our width and height here so i'm going to change the width to 24 and the height to 32, just like our game, or just like the graphics are supposed to be. So now once we do that, perfect. Well, mostly perfect. Our collision uh, detection, by the way, I'm going to um, make it super precise later on for the game. Right now, you'll notice there's a slight fuzziness to it, kind of. It's like the, the object slows down right before it hits the ground. I don't know if you notice it there, um, but I certainly do. Um, but we'll get to that later. So why did we uh, start using these graphics? Well, that's because uh, we need to make a modification to our sprite class um, in order to render relative to a camera. The way we do that is you want to take uh, your x position, you know, we're calling them real x and real y here. What we want to do is we want to change those a bit. We've got, um, you know, our pose x minus image dot get width divided by 2. Um, and our pose y minus image dot get height divided by two. That's all good. Um, but what we want to do now is we want to say real x um, equals real x minus um, renderer dot cam x plus. Um, now this doesn't mean it's going to be minus this plus this, but rather it's going to be this minus this plus this, okay? Because that's the way the order of operations works. Left to, addition and subtraction, left to right. Multiplication and division, left to right first. Um, but there's no multiplication division here. So real x minus renderer.cam x plus renderer.game width divided by two. 
Oh, there's division here. Um, so why isn't that working? Oh, okay. This needs to be an integer. Renderer.cam x. I'm going to duplicate that. And we're going to change this to real y equals real y cam y game height divided by 2. Okay? Now, if we were to run this game, what would happen is our platform would still be in the same position on the screen. Our uh, player will look like he's holding still in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. Or it would fail completely because I don't know what went wrong. Let's find out. Render at cam y to the real y um, equals real y minus the cam y. Oh, um, no, I still don't understand it. What's going wrong here? Well, first, um, we're going to go to our player, our platform, and make it work uh, this way too. What we have to do to make it work with the, the camera is we subtract from our pose x minus width divided by 2 in our render method. We want to subtract an integer that is renderer dot cam x oh okay um where is our sprite class plus no I don't understand it that should be working in any case in our platform okay so minus an integer that is renderer dot cam x plus render renderer dot game width divided by two. I'm gonna add a return right here. Uh, same thing here, minus an integer that is renderer dot cam y plus renderer dot game height divided by two. Now if we run the game, what happens? Okay, it appears that our uh, camera is moved in the wrong direction. What is it? We subtract that. Then we add game width divided by 2. That's normal. That's, that's all the way it's supposed to be. Why, does it, why is it moving strangely? Our camera is still in the right position, isn't it? It looks like it is. Okay, in player, let's let's find out what's going wrong. In in player, um, in the update method, at the very end of the update method, I'm going to say that cam x equals pose x and cam y equals pose y. So it should follow the player. And it fails. Sorry. Uh, renderer dot cam x and renderer dot cam y. Now we run it. What happens? Okay, yeah, see, we're following the player the way we're supposed to be. Okay, that's right. So, as you can see, the camera now follows the player as we move around. And it doesn't take much more to make it follow smoothly as opposed to, you know, the rigid way it's following, keeping the player in the exact center of the screen all the time. Um, so we'll probably improve on our camera thing later on. I like to get the scrolling background working first, though, if possible, because it looks really good and it's such an easy effect to do. Um... But if you, uh, in the meantime, if you like this episode, uh, please comment, like, and subscribe. I really do appreciate it. Um, and thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.